Penguin, Pain and Prejudice, number three, written by Greg Hurwitz and art by Zyman Kudransky. We left off last issue with basically a huge flashback issue, but the death of Penguin's mother being the big event. Uh, this issue picks up with her body being carted away. Penguin's telling his goons that he wants the most extravagant funeral ever for her, and he notices a woman who's just sobbing over his mother over in the corner, and he tells one of the goons that he wants to speak with her later. As a m medical gurney man, I don't know, some guy, EMT, goes by, he's chewing gum, he's genuinely rude, and Penguin makes note of him that he would like to speak to that guy later, too. Um... So then we see Penguin, he's just kind of dealing with stuff. He He's looking at his penguins and he sees on the news the woman that they ripped the earrings off of has put a million dollar reward uh, in order to find them. Um, we then see him receive the earrings because I guess he didn't get them within the last issue. I, I was unsure of that. Um, and he's... He, he's still just mourning. He's not doing anything for anyone, despite the fact they're just hanging around. They're just talking, and he's like, all right, go. I'm done with you. Bye. So he goes to the zoo. He goes to the penguin exhibit, of course, and he, he's got his hand up against the glass, and one of the penguins has the flipper against the glass. And there's a woman there who's feeling like a little ferret who's being taken out, and he's like, oh, is that a leg? It must be so big and strong. And turns out she's blind. She can't actually see what she's feeling. And Penguin takes note of this. And she's being made fun of first by some kids for thinking that the ferret was some big, strong animal. But she's, he stops her and he talks to her. And basically, he, he, he says, he's just straightforward. He's just like, you are absolutely lovely. I would love to take you out to dinner sometime. And she's just like, well, yes, of course. I'm, I'm flattered. So he... Takes her back to his place. They have dinner and she's, she can hear the echo in the room and she's in awe of the size of this place. And she she goes to reach out to touch Penguin's face and he recoils because he's like, I, sorry, I know, I know. A lot of people don't like being touched on their faces, but it's just, I wanted to get a feel for you and I'm sorry, I know it's awkward. And he's like, look, her name is Cassandra, by the way. Look, Cassandra, I'm incredibly attractive. And that's why I date so many women. But I was hoping that this could be different, that you wouldn't be interested in me strictly for my looks. And that's why I don't want you to feel how beautiful I truly am. And she's like, I understand, Oswald. That's, that makes sense. And he's like, look, I have some business to take care of. You're welcome to stay the night. You'll be treated like a queen. And I would very much like to see you later if you'll have me. And she, of course, says yes. So he... He has his meetings with the two people, but not before he passes by the series of rooms and he goes into one of them and there's Joker balancing on a ball, throwing knives at a, I can only assume, dwarf in a ball gag up against a spinning wheel with two women in bikinis standing behind him. I don't understand these scenes. I don't understand these scenes. That's all I can say. All right, so he, he gets into the meetings, and he's two. He has one with the guy who wronged him, who was rude to him, and one with the woman who was nice to him. And the man who wronged him, it's the same shtick as it was before. He has absolutely ruined this man's life. He is wanted for his... He planted drugs in the guy's car that was found. His wife was killed. Um, he just listed off here a gas leak in your house your aunt and uncle deported your neighbors killed when your water heater exploded and your son who is number four on the list for a new liver is now down to number 217 meanwhile the woman who is crying sobbing over uh, his mother he's taking pity on her and he's, he's been like look your landlord no longer owns your building you own your building you will be met by a uh limousine whenever you want a private jet whenever you need your full retirement has been a triple your pay for the rest of your life and the woman just stands up and it's like look i'm touched and you're a kind and generous man but the, 
love doesn't require payment. I just loved your mother. She was a wonderful woman, and I'm so sad to see her gone. And she leaves. So then we cut back to the woman. She's in the bedroom, and she she asks why Oswald goes to the zoo. What does he go to see? And he says the penguins. And then they get in this very detailed and specific conversation about why the penguins feet don't freeze like oswald knows exactly why their veins are structured a certain way i'm not going to repeat all that but basically she he starts rubbing her feet giving her a bit of pleasure and she's like well why don't you let me touch you can i can i touch you yet and he's like oh no not yet that's not why i asked you here and i'd rather give you pleasure and as this is going on batman is literally crouched outside the window spying in on it taking a look so then it's the day of the funeral uh he puts the earrings on his mother as he has a couple flashbacks his father died of pneumonia of course as we believe uh or his mother believes but his mother's like look you must always carry an umbrella with you so that you don't also die that way stay safe and never leave my side and the funeral ends and he's crying at her grave inside their uh mausoleum and he just loses it he starts smashing up all of his other relatives graves just saying how he can't they can't have her they can't have her and then he just collapses down on the ground next to her grave uh cut to soon afterwards uh some guys are waiting in an alley to hear from penguin because the heat's too high from the batman to just walk into the iceberg lounge anymore penguin comes at them with a new thing that he wants them to get it's a celebrity with a giant ass diamond ring on it. Uh, they blow up her limousine, shoot him, shoot her, and also I guess the husband, uh, with just a ridiculous amount of ammo, and steal the ring light off her finger. We see that he's taken the ring out to dinner with Cassandra, and he gives it to her and says like, "This is for you." And she's like, "My God, this must be at least nine carats." And she's like, "How could you possibly know that?" And she says that when she feel something she can see it she she can see it so that just puts that little twinge in him of like she can never feel me and then we see batman at the crime scene he picks up a piece of ammo and sees there was a fingerprint on it he runs a search for it and gets the name of a guy who was at the scene and has a way to track it down to penguin now i guess uh but penguin ends saying like you are the worth of the world uh stay by my side and with you there, there's nothing that can stop me. Showing that Batman is on the case. I still really like this. I think it's a fantastic look at Penguin. Um, just the evil he can do while also just diving into the mindset of him in general. The art is fantastic. Uh, between the flashbacks, how it treats the different moments. These random goddamn Joker panels, I still don't get regardless. I really do like this series, and I do still highly suggest checking it out. I think I said that last time as well. Um, I'm going to give this one a 7. It's very well done. I'm still waiting for just the punch. I think that that might have been last issue, and I just didn't fully appreciate it at the time. Uh, but I'm hoping that there's going to be something a little bit more later on. We'll see what happens. But uh, no, definitely a 7 right now. Definitely enjoying it.